Okay, um, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to RADA Short Courses Q&A, the first time this has ever been done for the RADA Short Courses. My name is Gary Lagden, hello. Um, I think I recognize a few people's names um, on the attendees, so uh, welcome. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm an associate tutor for RADA Short Courses and I graduated from the BA course. Um, it wasn't called that then actually, it was the actor training course in 1994. And since then I've been acting directing and most recently been teaching at the Royal Academy on the short courses. Um, the short courses um, offer courses for everyone to get a taste of the training that is given at RADA. Also to build on your existing experience or indeed just explore a new skill that might interest you. Um, I believe that there's a rigor and a dynamism to these courses and we hope today's chat will help you to choose a course that's right for you and reassure you that courses are there for your benefit. They are there to help you to achieve and attain. Um, if you have any questions during this um, Q&A, um, if you could put that through the Q&A box during our conversation and at the end um, Sarah's going to um, put them through to me so I'll be able to get Johnny and Jasperito myself to answer them as um, clearly as possible at the end of the session. Um, for the next 20 minutes, as I say, I'll be chatting with two former short course graduates. We've got Johnny O'Donnell here and Jasper Tassange, um, who really last summer and autumn dived into the short courses of RADA. And I mean, just looking at it here, and between the two, you undertook the second act course, the winter shorts, the Stanislavski course, scene study courses and you both participated in the Shakespeare in Action course which was a two-week course. Before we continue I'd like you to say just a couple of words about yourself guys and um, let's start with Jasper. Off you go. Hi thank you. Um, yes I am based in LA and my background is science. I uh, used to I used to go to UCL actually and I used to walk past the RADA building and uh, think to myself I wish I had the courage to go there and see if I could you know be part of that but instead I used to go to the coffee shop have a couple of coffees and uh, pretend that you know that was as far as I would ever get. Uh, I'm in LA now I'm working as a, an actress as well as in the science field and when these courses became available online I jumped at the chance. Fantastic, thank you Jasper. Johnny. Hi, um, my name is Johnny O'Donnell, I'm an actor based in Northern Ireland. Um, I got quite lucky as a teenager, I was at a drama group and I got taken on board by a, a Belfast agent and uh, my first audition, I got into a TV show for the BBC. And then the, the role in the TV show led to a movie uh, directed by Paul Greengrass, who did uh, the Bourne movies. It, it's called Bloody Sunday. It went on to win the Sundance Award. And um, after that, I did, a, I starred in a, a movie called The Widow's Son, directed by Ema Reynolds. And um, I sort of, I stepped away from acting for a while, worked a bit behind the scenes and Rada just called to me again and I wanted to reconnect with the industry and to train to improve as an actor. And, uh, and that's, that's what led me to Rada. But picking up on that, Johnny, what would, <laughs> so it was specifically Rada that called out to you. Why was that? Um, well, I had evaluated an awful lot of courses online, all the different sort of courses in, in England and Ireland. And um, after close evaluation, RAD has really stood out. It's the description of the courses, they seem to really get to the heart of being an actor, like to the core of being an actor. And just the, the attention to detail on each course was immense. And I, you know, I got really excited about how dynamic and how versatile the courses were. But they definitely were like streaks above the, the competition for me. And was this, uh, uh, and Jasper, I'll ask you this, did you look at the RADA 
online courses because of what was happening in the world or were you thinking of doing it anyway? I mean, was it just something you went, right, okay, I've got this time, I'm now going to look at these short courses at RADA? Um, I'll go ahead. Um, well, for me, I actually wrote in to, to RADA, I think, before they launched their courses. Um, I was already in classes here and I've done lots of training and everything went online. Um, and then because of everything that was going on, I was of the mindset of, I'm going to reach out and take these chances that I never thought to take before. And RADA was something that I've always wanted to do. So I actually wrote in and I said, is there any chance that there is going to be an opportunity to do an online course? Is there an opportunity for me to audition online to be part of part of this? And um, Sally actually wrote back to me and she said, we, we are actually starting to do this. So if you fill out the application get the references, etc. So for me, it was just something that I knew I'd always wanted to do. And uh, then I found out more about it as I did it. Jasper, on that, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because here we are, the three of us chatting away nicely. Did you have any sort of preconceived ideas about the Academy, about the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art? Because I, I know I did bef before I went all those years ago. I mean, did anything stick out for you that, that sort of changed when you did the short course? Well, the first thing is, I mean, the name itself, the Royal Academy, that says it all. It's a world-renowned um academy everybody if you say rather everybody assumes you're already an amazing actor <laughs> you've been there um and for me the reputation growing up it was all always there it was the best drama school to ever be associated with and to have any uh, um <clears throat> be able to do any classes with that's amazing um so i had extremely high expectations and also being a school in england um, English actors have a reputation of being incredible, working hard, um, having that work ethic. And so again, I so associated all of that with RADA. When I went and did the short courses, I was not disappointed. I exceeded, exceeded what I thought I was going to have to, have to do. Um, it brought in people of this caliber who had that work ethic and were excited. They knew that, you know, this is an establishment that has a reputation and we're going to have to work hard and it's an honor actually to be able to work with these teachers um in in, in a small in a small capacity but we're being able to have those tools so i think the attitude we had going in allowed that reputation to um be exceeded that that was my experience um yeah that's you know, keep going back so <laughs> something yeah. I mean, for those who don't know, Jasper has to leave this webinar at one point because she's actually doing another rather short course later on, um, UK time in the evening, which is sort of, uh, you know, testament really. Johnny, for you, did you have any preconceived ideas about RADA? Now, they don't necessarily have to all be, you know, sort of, it's the best thing ever. I know for me, for example, before I went, I was sort of in awe of the place. And, yeah. um, you know, a, bit, a big surprise for me was that everyone was really nice. I mean, you work hard, of course, but I kind yeah. of went, ooh, okay, this is, this is, different from what my preconceived idea was. Absolutely. I Well, it was similar for me, Yari, in that for me, like while I had experience in screen acting, I didn't have an awful lot of formal experience or training. And I had these this preconceived idea of RADA as this very intimidating place where, um, you know, uh, you had to speak with uh, RP and... <laughs> Uh, everybody knew every play in existence. And, you know, and, and actually um, the teachers really do know every play in existence. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple I can think of who really do know pretty much <laughs> everything about everything. Yeah. Well, definitely. Jeff for one is, is amazing. He knows everything. And I, um, so I was quite intimidated signing on to Rada, um, but, you know, the, the teachers and the training, it was so accessible. So they were all so supportive and they, they never met, made me feel that I was out of my depth. However, it didn't disappoint. They said, you know, you all laid out a challenge and it was, it was such a challenge. It 
to, you know, it tested me to the, the very edge of my abilities of what I could do. Um, it was harder than I expected, but, but I was pleased with that because I was, I was looking for a challenge, but yeah, it surpassed my expectations also. And, um, yeah, it went beyond what I imagined it would be, but, and it, of course, it's an intimidating feat and it's, it's hard to, it's, it's a, it's a trial, but at the same time, such a feeling of achievement and satisfaction coming out the other end. I don't know if you two felt this, but I certainly felt that um, I was amazed how, when it came to, in the context of a couple of the courses I directed, and how it felt like a real theatrical event, how it wasn't, didn't necessarily just feel like an online session where we're learning skills. It suddenly was sort of production week and suddenly it was our first performance and that was that was a learning curve for me did you feel that Jasper that sort of the frisson before before a sharing or something yeah absolutely I was actually incredibly surprised at how creative and how well um, the courses were set up so that you actually forgot that you were online. I mean, we had the movement classes, we had the voice classes, we had um, um, <clears throat> uh, sonnets, monologues, and then when we did the production, um, it was, and we're in our bedrooms or our houses individually, you forgot that you were there. And I actually think that I got to a level much deeper and further than I have in any of my live classes. Um, so I think the online thing is it, it, it didn't hold anything back. What was what, when I look back and I think when we did the Midsummer Nights uh, dream production, um, my bedroom suddenly became this forest and we're running back, <laughs> back and forth. But we're so engrossed in the production and we're so engrossed in, you know, how the windows would open up and how we make we just transformed everything and it became part of the story became part of the production and the fact that it was online um meant we had to do more work technically and be more responsible with our own cues um but again it, it that that uh, feeling of accomplishment was so much greater and it also gave me a, a level of excitement that look we're kind of moving into a new era of um storytelling here where before this, you know, I'd seen plays and people were talking to each other and essentially doing readings. But the way that it was done here at RADA, it basically used the technology as an advantage. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but... Uh... <laughs> Very good. No, it does. The two of you, excellent. I, I, there was one phrase that popped out to me, was it was the time when the actors had to start suspending their disbelief as well as the audience. So, you know, you had to, part of your challenge was you had to just go, right, I'm there. Even though we're connecting through a screen rather than in the flesh. Fascinating. Okay. I mean, that's what it's about, right? And that's where the challenge is as an actor, where you forget about your surroundings and it's all about the story. So, again, that's, that's, that's what, what we had to do. Yeah. Do, do. Practically, guys, and I, I know a lot of the people who will be um, listening into this, if not today, in the future, um, Living outside of London, um, as you both do, did it make a difference that the course was available online for you? That's the open question. Well, John, for me, Gary, it, it makes economic sense because, you know, I saved money on travel, accommodation, expenses, and I find that I was free to focus 100% on my performance. And, you know, it's world-class training and all from the comfort of my own home. It, it just, it makes it hugely accessible to everyone. Yeah, financially, the, f the financial difference I bet is massive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can take the money actually that you would have spent on planes and hotel rooms and you can spend that on another course, for example, and really, really build on your training. Because a lot of these courses work together, you know, to to um, prove you as an actor. Yeah. Very good. Just be the same for you, yeah? Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do the course had it not been online because I live in the States now. And uh, I had, you know, 
for a few years felt, oh, I wish I could go and do the, that summer course. I miss my chance. And so it, it became online. And although I had to wake up at the crack, crack of dawn uh, in my world, <laughs> It was definitely worth it. And I thought to myself quite often, there's not much I would get up this early to do, but I was very excited to do so. Yeah, so I Good definitely for you. would not have been able to do it but had it not gone online. I love that, Jack. There's not much I'd get up that early for. Excellent, that's a, that's a crack. Um, a number of the courses that you've both been part of come under this, the phrase mind and body, which, um, aim to unite the practical experience with poetry and movement. And um, as actors, what does that, what does that mean to you? Uh, Jasper, if I could start with you this time, what does that mean to marry the practical experience with, and, and unite with poetry and movement? Well, it's very important actually. Um, and, and I felt that it's an aspect that's missing in a lot of the schools that I've trained with, uh, where the focus is usually you know, on the uh, story development, um, scene breakdown. Um, but then what, again, this is what really stood out for me at RADA, the focus of movement and voice and bringing that into the story, into the character. And we know that we talk about that, you know, uh, building the characters outside in, inside out, but really I had never done it until we did this course at RADA. Um, and what I found was interesting was being able to discover what my own movement was, what my own voice was in the real world and how to improve that to, to be healthier. And actually I had terrible back problems and just from some of the exercises that uh, I did in this course, cured, cured my problems just by doing those exercises every day. It was incredible. Really? And, yeah, and just the way that I was standing, just slight adjustments. So for me, it helped me uh, from a health, well-being point of view, as well as then bringing that into the character and being able to explore the way that I walked or the way that I carried myself in a heavy place or a light place. And just being able to think about that imaginatively and then actually doing it. And the same with the voice being able to explore different types of voices, singing the lines and, and all of that, it actually opened up so many places that my character could go that I never thought it could before. So I, I, I felt like bringing voice and movement into um, the art is almost like when a baby is born and they're kind of trying to explore how to move, how to get up, how to walk. It was relearning that. And ever since these courses, I have been doing that with my, my other acting work where I thought I need to create this new human being. And so how do I walk? How do I speak? I'm at the baby stage and it's up to me how I can do that individually. So um, again, for me, those two elements are so important and they're talked about everywhere. But in these few weeks, it completely went to a different level. My art went to a different level. Um, and I think the key element is that the teachers at RADA speak to each other. They actually communicate. And so that they would know what we had done in our previous classes with the other teachers, what we needed to work on, how to develop that character. If we were having any trouble, they would speak to each other. And again, I had never seen that level of communication anywhere else. And it made a huge difference. Wonderful. I mean, amazing about your back, Jasper. I mean, if nothing else, do, do you know what I mean? It, it's I phenomenal. Shots. I was having steroid shots and uh, um, acupuncture and cupping, all of that stuff. And uh, it was Brilliant. just two simple movements. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cut down yeah. on medical expenses, save some money there. <laughs> 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 there's something um just picking up on jaspreed's point johnny about the the idea that you know yes. you kind of start in a sort of uh, as a baby and then use yourself as the starting point and bit by bit you're aiming for this sort of freedom that encourages transformation now all the courses that you've done together you two are in a way aiming for that freedom so that you use yourself as the starting point and then move on does that make sense to you johnny yeah, it does, using ourselves as a starting point, because in life, you know, you've, like, 
you know, as, as an actor, as a person, I've built up certain habits. So my posture, you know, is fixed in a, in a certain way. I, there are certain ways I'm comfortable sitting, standing. Rather, what they did was they forced me to use my imagination and get creative with my posture to think about it from a different angle and say, well, what if, what if I approached it from this, this angle? What if I didn't just access a character psychologically? What if I could access a character physically? What if there was a way to do that? So for me, it was about using your imagination as this sort of laboratory where you sort of pull your character in or absorb them using the lines and you experiment with movement, voice, uh, visualization as well, and really, you know, start to bring the character al alive. Um, but imagination, it certainly made me more creative. Fantastic, thank you guys. Um, this is quite a short question and, and, and I like it, but there are so many different short courses at RADA, which everyone can find online at rada.ac.uk. And so many different ways in, as you've described so eloquently yourselves, and varying experiences. What advice would you give to someone who was concerned about um, going to RADA? If they were, I don't know, even if just the conversation that we've had might seem slightly out of their comfort zone. Is there any advice you would give them, uh, Johnny? Okay. Um, well, my advice to someone if they were concerned would be, first of all, I would say it's, it's only natural to be concerned, but the best thing that you can do is trust the teachers and this institution with this amazing track record of producing the finest actors. And know that every actor who goes in there is nervous, is excited, is some are intimidated and, you know, I remember being intimidated when I first even searching the website and evaluating the course thinking, well, why well, won't I? I haven't really had much formal training. And then by the same token, um, I was then acting in, in two characters in one play in, in one play in Macbeth with confidence, um, fully inspired with all the tools at my disposal that I needed with every teacher at my back supporting me you know, and, and confident in voice, vocally, physically, mentally prepared. So, so they really, that, that concern, they can turn that around for you and they can really make you more assertive and more confident as an actor, I believe. Brilliant, job. thank you. Any um, thoughts, Jasper? Oh, sorry. I, no, 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 I was just gonna say, um, I really recommend Second Act as well to any actors with, a, with say they have a little bit of experience and they're looking to bridge the gap between uh, an intermediate course and more advanced courses, second act is brilliant. It's accessible, but it's also a great challenge. Thank you, Johnny. What about you, Jasper? And for someone who might be feeling, oh, I, I don't know if I've got the right skills and tools for this. I work. think just take that mentality and throw it out the window um I, I feel <laughs> that's that's all you have to do i think there's enough courses on here and if um if um they thought that you weren't ready or experienced enough to be part of those courses they wouldn't be available to you so it's about having trust in the fact that they are available to you and also remembering that everybody feels that way it doesn't matter how experienced you are as an actor or an actress that thought that fear is going to be there and being able to get over that and just say i'm going to go and have fun and i'm going to go and experience it le learn some new skills and there's going to be teachers i can guarantee who are so experienced but really humble and very kind um, at the same time as being professional so that you will get something out of it no matter where you are. Um, choose whichever course um, shouts out to you. They're short courses. So, you know, it's, 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 that's, that's also kind of, you go to a restaurant and instead of having a huge main meal, you can just go and have tapas. That's what these short courses are. And I, I would just say, explore, see what sounds interesting. For me, I think the Shakespeare courses, 
uh, were incredible because it taught me so much for my acting in terms of specificity. I didn't think, as, as Johnny was saying, I didn't think that uh, I'd be able to perform uh, as Demetrius in A Midsummer Night's Dream at the beginning of the course. I thought, I can't remember two lines of Shakespeare. To be able to remember two lines off book confidently and understand it, that would be great. And at the end of the two weeks, I was, being, being, I was Demetrius and I was off book. Um, I think, I, I don't know <laughs> if I made some of the lines up, but I, I, I got through it. I was, I couldn't believe it. So just do it is, is my advice. I like the idea of, of the sort of the, the sympathetic expert that you described there, Jasper. They, I think that's, I've always thought that the word kind is definitely a phrase. Challenging, of course, as Johnny's been mentioning, but but there's a there's a care there. Um, really, thank you. Um, oh, now this is this is a great question. We were sort of talking about it before the webinar started. So um, I do, um, for you, uh, Jasper, can you describe practically how participants work together online via Zoom, so, say like um, a movement session. How does how would a movement session work for you, Jasper? Um, so basically, are you talking about when we were exploring and we were being- Yeah, literally, practically, how does it work? Okay, so it's very simple. Basically, your teacher's there, uh, you just pretend. <laughs> I pretended I have a robot as a teacher and here is her face and she can see me. <laughs> so the room is available to you. You just set your laptop up so that the teacher or he, of course, can see, can see you. They are watching through the windows to see everybody's form, to see what they're doing. And, and basically it did not feel any different other than the fact that um, they couldn't move around you. It almost felt freer and you were able to let go. I certainly felt like I was able to let go and forget that there was anybody watching me. And I could probably go to a more comfortable level to explore with my movement because um, I was in my own space. Um, yeah. And yeah, right. so they just watched Absolutely. you. Absolutely. It's very it. clear, Jasper. Thank you. Um, and for you, Johnny, same sort of question. But how, how does ensemble work? Um, through a Zoom? How, do, how does that work yeah. practically? What, what happens? Well, practically, I guess I, well, you or I created a safe space in my own environment where I feel, you know, I have, it could just be a small corner, what, whatever you have access to, but it, it's a safe space where you feel free to move in any direction, 360. And, you know, you, you find that when you, you're working with on gallery view and the whole class is on there, that it's this fully immersive class experience. And suddenly you're seeing all the other students moving and maybe creating like a language through movement. And it becomes a really surreal experience. Uh, for me, that was when uh, we really started to break the ice with my classmates and we started to bond and connect, even though we were maybe separated by thousands of miles, you felt close to people and you felt like you were speaking to each other, communicating, but without words, um, just with movements. And suddenly you're sending energy to each other through the, the medium of, of Zoom. Um, if one thing I find useful as well is having that freedom that the technology allows you to, to, to move from gallery, which is the immersive class experience, to pinning the teacher and, and you know, they fill the screen and you can hone in on a specific movement. You can really focus on it. And, but yeah, gallery, gallery is where the magic happens and everybody just communicates through, through movement. It's, it's incredible. I think it's fascinating though. Um, and again, for, um, for me, it was a learning curve, but the words that you're saying, things like trust, um, Jasper, and, and then Johnny, you're saying communicating with connection through the screen to another human is, is just, I mean, that's sort of amazing that, that, that we were able to achieve that um, collectively. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you've kind of answered some of these questions, so we'll just whip through these if that's okay, because I'm, I'm mindful of time. Um, 
did you feel you got enough individual time and attention during the courses online? Now, this is key, I think, for people who are thinking about, oh, well, what if there's, you know, 16 people um, on a course? Um, and so, oh, shall I start? Jasper, again, did, did you feel you got enough individual time and attention as well as the group work? Yeah, I got more individual time and attention than I ever have in a live classroom. Um, and um, I was able to actually uh, learn more from what was taught to others. The classrooms, the cl it's, it's, it's a small number of students. Um, and I think because it was a Zoom session, there was extra thought put in from the teacher's perspective to make sure everybody uh, was getting the attention that they needed. So they got the, thank you. Um, Johnny, same question for you. Did you feel you, you had enough sort of personal um, time with the tutors? Yes, yeah, I mean, absolutely, 100%. Um, actually in the courses that I did, I did three courses, um, Shakespeare in Action, Stanislavski, Physical Action and Second Act. And on those courses, there was dedicated one-on-one -on -one time actually scheduled into each course. So that's, that's integral because that was my moment, you know, with dedicated time with the movement teacher, with the vocal coach, with Gary, the director, with, and on speeches. That was really one-on-one -on -one time where you really um, deconstruct and reconstruct everything that you're doing. Um, so I love that. And, you know, the teachers are very intuitive. They're open to there, if here's a trick, if you just put your hand up and ask a question, the teachers stop what they're doing, answer your question fully, and um, they ensure that you understand it. They're they're very intuitive. Um, I find that they they're masters at identifying strengths and weaknesses. So that all the tutors were able to point out my strengths and weaknesses and provide me with areas of focus so that I could make those weaknesses stronger and bring them up to the level of the strength. It just makes you more of an all, all rounder as an actor. Brilliant. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Jess Green. <laughs> um, these questions are kind of tied up. Um, so I'm gonna whip them out and you, you can speak, you've, you've answered them pretty much. Do you have one biggest takeaway from the short courses that you've done um, in your own creative process? Is there one thing? How has it changed or influenced your working practice? So that's the second part. They could be tied up, these questions. And do you have, and you don't have to have, because I think this is quite an unfair question, but I love it, because uh, Richard's brilliant. What was your favourite moment? Um, so what's the biggest takeaway from participating on the short courses? How has that influenced your working practice? And do you have a favourite moment? Johnny, I'll start with you. Okay. For me, um, the biggest takeaway for me was there are many different ways to access a character, whether that's um, they're psychologically, emotionally, physically. There's so many different ways to do it. And you, the imagination is something you can use in which to do that. Another takeaway I would say is visualization, to visualize before you speak, to see what the character is seeing, um, to really live in their world, um, those were big takeaways for me. Sort of. So that and that and that's influenced your work then for moving forward. That's oh, absolutely, Gary. Like um, the one of the courses in particular, Stanislavski Physical Action, provided me with the system and an approach uh, to take on any role or any character I play. I I see that approach as like a key to unlocking even that the most impenetrable characters. Um, that's a way in, and that's something that I've, I've taken with me on any role that I do. I was doing, I did a short film in London uh, a few weeks ago, and, and that, that approach, it sped up my process a lot, and uh, it really helped me crack the code um, much, much earlier. Highlights, I would say, my, my biggest highlight was uh, as I mentioned before, playing two characters in Macbeth, which Gary, you directed. Um, it was terribly good. It was terribly good. <laughs> it was amazing. And uh, I don't know how you do, did it. It was like you're the conductor of an orchestra and it was, it was amazing. Um, Wait, Johnny, but, you're brilliant. 
Um, we're running you. a bit behind time, I think. Yeah. Um, so sorry, everyone. John, have yeah. you got, um, what's your biggest takeaway, Jasprit? My biggest takeaway was against the integration of everything into the acting, every, the movement, the, the voice, um, and being able to create that character and take it to, to another level, learning all those tools. Um, uh, with regards to, to my favorite moment, it's so difficult because there was so many. I, I, I learned so much from Jeff's monologues, Brigitte's sonnets, everything just, it, the inspiration to continue being a storyteller just went to a completely different level. It was even 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 now when I get to a point where I'm, you know, I've, I've got a piece, I've got some lines to learn. I'm thinking, oh, damn, what, what am I doing? I'll go back <laughs> and I'll pick up a sonnet you know, or I'll pick up a Shakespeare monologue and I'll feel inspired and I'll be like, this is a piece of Shakespeare and it's my job to make this amazing. So I need to um, translate it. And so I, go, I, I look at story in a completely different place. Um, I'll, t I'll tell you what was crazy to me. The fact that um, um, they also brought in um, lecturers from King's University um, and, and uh, taught us about the history and showed how that was so important. Learning the world in which we live um, specifically just change the whole story as well so again you know when you're working on a script to create that world whether it's there or not it's our job to do that um, and, and so that yeah. that came in and then they brought in um, I was obsessed with Star Wars that particular week so it was a bit weird that suddenly Tanya Moody appeared on the screen <laughs> in front of us and I remember thinking I've been talking about Star Wars for the last two weeks and everybody's getting sick of me and wait a second here's tanya moody from star wars giving us tips on auditioning and i, and I just i was blown away i thought someone was in my brain <laughs> brilliant that's brilliant thank you jasper i'm obsessed i've been obsessed with star wars all my life so it's um, we're a load um oh thank you sarah sarah's just um given me um, a recap of a couple of questions um, for us to have a think about. Um, question from Kathleen. Please could you confirm whether RADA will reopen for students to attend part-time in person later this year? Sorry, Kathleen, I can't confirm that. I don't know um, what's going on. Well, the way of the world at the moment, it seems it's a movable feast. So, um, but if you look on the RADA website, it will let you know as soon as decisions have been made by the council and the health secretary and the government. Uh, Tabitha, what can participants hope to gain from rather short courses compared to courses offered by other institutions, institutes? Do you have any advice on how participants can get the most out of the short courses? We've sort of touched on some of this. As for the other institutes that do short courses, I'm afraid I'm a little bit in the dark when it comes to that, as I only work for the Royal Academy. So I don't know um, the standard or what they offer, I'm afraid. Um, but... Uh, Johnny, do you have any, any advice of how participants can get the most out of the short courses? We, we, we kind of spoke about it earlier on, but is there anything that pops, pops up for you? Absolutely. I think one tip would be to be completely in the moment. Um, don't worry about learning everything or absorbing everything or taking it in. Just trust that your instincts as an actor will filter out what works for you and what doesn't. The teachers will tell you some of this stuff you will absorb and some of it will just bounce off you and you'll take away what's unique to you as an actor. No two actors, I, I don't think, are going to go into a RADA course and come out with the same training. Even there, every actor is an individual, is unique. You're going to take what works for you, take away what works for you and your instincts are your compass. But just know that you've been exposed to the best training in the world. Very good. Um, I've got another question here from um, Anonymous, which says, do you think there's an age you are too old to do a short course um, or to apply for the BA undergraduate acting course at RADA? Well, uh, the, the BA undergraduate acting course has all its information, again, at rada.ac.uk but for the short courses Jasper, do you think that someone could be too old to do a short course at rada no i don't think so at all i think what, when you choose to do something when you're a bit older you have more dedication towards it um, and the fear of age is just from ourselves 
So get rid of it and just go in there and do it. It's interesting, Jess, because one of the courses I, um, I worked on, um, the eldest participant was 83, the youngest was 16, and they worked on the same course. So that just shows the full gamut of ages that, that, that you can get on these courses. And there was one final question. Um, is there any financial support scholarship schemes available for short courses? Um, I don't think there is. However, you can get in touch with short courses. Um, here's the email, shortcourses at rada.ac.uk. I don't think there is any financial help that RADA would necessarily give, but possibly they might know shortcourses at rada.ac.uk. They might know of different avenues to help fund yourself. I don't know, I'm afraid. Okay, guys. Amazingly, we've only overrun by two minutes, which is, aren't we good? Um, Johnny, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, Jasper, thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, I'm sure everyone's um, very grateful for your honest um, conversations. And also for me, it's really great to hear <laughs> what a great time you two had. That's fantastic. So um, we're going to end this session now. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for um, participating in this webinar. And um, I hope that uh, in the future, you will consider um, looking at the website, getting in touch with short courses, finding out what course is right for you, and becoming part of the RADA um, family, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art family. <laughs>